So I'm back taking a look at one more mini PC. Now this is something a little more low end. A lot of you did say that you wanna see a review of something a little bit more frugal in terms of just the price and the wattage as well. So something that's not gonna get possibly too hot, but also gonna be easy on the power bill, something you can just run 24 seven. It could be this particular model here. This is from Ace PC. It is the AK3 that was, yes, sent out to me in exchange for my review. So this model here is powered by the Sauron J4125. That's a quad core CPU. It's only 10 watts maximum. And in my testing and under idle, we'll only use about five watts, which is very, very good. So it's just sipping away at the power there and under full load about 20 watts, which is also very, very good because it's, well, it's low end. Now the maximum turbo is 2.7 gigahertz on this or 2.6 across all four of those cores. Okay, so let's take a look at the ports, the build and the design of this particular mini PC, and I'll show you how to install a 2.5 inch hard drive. So, power button right here, bit of a click to it, but it does feel good, the quality, and two USB 3 ports that do power external hard drives, USB 2. Now the micro SD card reader, this one is actually upside down, so when you wanna put your micro SDs into this, they click right in and sit flush, and the maximum speeds read and write, so I'm getting about 24 megabytes per second, 23, so it's not super fast. On the left-hand side here, we do have two HDMI 2 ports, so both of them do support 4K 60 frames per second, and you can run dual monitors with this, which is great. And we do have another USB 2 port, this is our power in, gigabit LAN, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with microphone support, Kensington lock slot, and at the top here, we do have a little screw that I've removed already, just to show you that if you pull on this little latch here, it will then let us take the lid off. So this is the lid right here, I'll show you that, Ace PC, and it is made out of plastic. The whole build is plastic, and this right here, the gold color looks like it might have been copper, actual metal to keep it cool, some sort of passive heatsink, but that's definitely not the case. So to install the 2.5 inch drive, you've got three screws to remove, then mount it into that bracket and connect it up. And I highly recommend installing a SATA 3 SSD in this because we are limited to eMMC 4.5.1 speeds because that's the internal storage this one has. It's a SAN disk and 128 gigabytes. And uh, you'll see on the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side here too, We've got VGA out, and also right here, this is the right, I'm getting a little confused here, and we do have a status LED. And finally, on the bottom, this is the intake for our little tiny fan that's in there. So it is, yes, actively cooled, but most of the time it's passively cooled because this fan doesn't come on often, and when it does, it does make a little bit of noise, but you don't really notice, it's actually very good. And you can see I did even go further and look at the internals inside. So we do have what looks like a tiny miniature GPU, desktop GPU blower. So it sucks in the cool air, then tries to blow it down this vent on the side. And there's an even an M.2 slot on this. But sadly in the BIOS, it does not seem to be enabled, which is also locked down that BIOS. So we cannot install a SATA 3 SSD into this model here. Overall, okay build quality. Yes, it is kind of plastic. The height of this is 4.5 centimeters. Now, if you do go even further, and that is removing the rubber feet on the bottom here, undo the four screws, you can then pull this back off and that exposes our internals. Now, I suspected that this would probably be the case. You can see right here that we do have a SATA 3 M.2 slot, and this is the 2242 millimeter in size. So yes, you can add a SATA 3 SSD here as well. They don't actually advertise this fact, probably because they don't want people to open it up and go this far. So you can see our cooler there. It looks a little bit like a GPU, desktop GPU cooler, the blower style that it sucks the air in from below, and then it blasts it down to the vent that is on the bottom there. So here is the BIOS, and now we don't have a lot of options. Most of the mini PCs I do review, they will be completely unlocked, but this particular BIOS isn't, okay? It's locked right down to us. The only real settings we do have are under the, strangely enough, the boot menu. So some of these would normally be under the advanced tab, but since there is no advanced tab, the interesting ones here are this one, the auto power. So it can detect that it lost its power state, and when it detects you've got power again, it will automatically turn itself on. So this is handy if you plan to be using this, say as a file server or a server, something like that, a low end kind of low powered server, 
and you're able to do that. And that is basically it there. Now boot, of course you would set a different boot order option here if you were to be using say a SATA 3 SSD in this, then that's where you go along and change it and then you would go and save and exit. So let's jump into Windows now. And these are the setup languages that you will find when you first turn it on. So we've got all your important language packs already pre-installed for us. So the Windows 10 setup does actually take a little bit longer than other mini PCs I have reviewed. That is because our storage, this one here is eMMC 4.5.1 spec. It's a SanDisk DF128 gigabytes. And these are the speeds here. So this is the bottleneck of this particular system here. So I highly recommend installing a SATA 3 SSD to get much better speeds, well over double than what you're getting here with this particular drive. It will hold the system up a little bit. Now the memory, the good news is here that it's not single channel, that it is in fact in dual channel. That is great. Of course, it's sold onto the motherboard. There are no memory upgrades with this particular model. And the speed is 2.4 gigahertz, which this chipset supports. So that is good. Now the Windows 10 version we have is Windows 10 Pro. It's 1809, the version that comes pre-installed on that eMMC. So it is dated you will have to run Windows updates to get up to speed and up to date there with that. And just to point out too, in our device manager here, so the wireless is Intel's dual band wireless AC. It's the 7265. And it's not a super wireless card. It's not really quick or anything like that. Um, but it'll do the job. And remember, we do have gigabit LAN then if you want to overcome the limitation we have with that particular one there. Now I did test out the 4K ports. So they are 4K 60 Hertz, the HDMI 2 port, sorry. And that is good. So we don't have the 4K 30 Hertz that we used to be stuck at on the previous generation with these particular Intel low-end CPUs. Okay, so I'm gonna show you just a few benchmarks and the performance, what you can expect. This is just to give you the best idea possible of how this system is gonna be. Is it gonna be a choppy, laggy mess or can you actually do some light computing on it? Is it semi-decent? So start menu, with this kind of hardware, I often do show this, that it can sometimes load in very choppy and laggy, but this doesn't, this is good. And it's probably because it does have a dual channel RAM. It's running at decent speeds. We've got higher base clocks with the J4125 definitely helping out. Now, when you do look at benchmarks, synthetic benchmarks here, so this is Geekbench 5, it is low, very low. It's a low end, low power CPU. So you cannot expect a lot. It's only 10 watts, remember. And here we have Geekbench 4. So that's coming up to almost 2000 on single core score, multi-core score because it is quad core and it can hold the turbos at 2.6 gigahertz across all four cores. It's, it's all right, it's all right, but again, you know, it, it is a low end. I went, even went as far as to run Cinebench R15. It did take a long time, it was quite slow. And yeah, 233 CB means that yes, it is, it is a little slow there, okay? So I have been monitoring our power from the wall. I do have a socket meter now, and idle, I am seeing right now about 5.5 watts up to about 6, sometimes 6.5, and even a little bit lower. And this is probably why you would get one of these particular mini PCs with this hardware, is it's very low power consumption. And maximum it's pulling. So this is without any external hard drives or anything plugged, plugged in. I do have a SATA 3 drive in company running, a Samsung 850 Evo with all my files on it. And I'm seeing 20 watts maximum. That again is very good. Now just to quickly talk about the thermals and the fan noise, just early on here that... I'm happy with it. I mean, the fan sometimes cycles on and off, but it normally disappears. Most of the time, the fan is off, not even sucking up any dust or making any noise, which is really good. And you'll see that the thermals that all the time I've been using it now, pushing it hard from time to time, 85 degrees max, that's really about all it's going to get up to with my ambient 25 degrees that I have here in the studio where I'm recording. So what about video playback performance? This hardware does have VP9 and HEVC hardware native decoding, and that means that the performance is actually very good, okay? So Jellyfish, this is my test file that I run, 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10-bit, and initially a little slow, but very, very good playback. So now that is smooth, no problems. You can skip ahead in the timeline, and good, very, very good performance. Now, if you use something like Kodi, which I do actually have installed, it will be even smoother. And then what about 4K60? 
this is normally quite demanding, can choke on a few systems, especially the laptops and the tablets. Initially here, it's a little laggy, as you can see. That's not quite the 60 frames per second that it should be running at. But later on, once it gets going, that's a definite 60. It becomes quite smooth. Uh, the same for YouTube playback as well. So it can do the 4K 60, and it depends on your internet connection as well for the buffering, but very, very good there. So let's have a look now at just loading in some documents, document performance for your general computing. Actually pretty good. This is surprising me, this mini PC. The performance is quite good. So this Word file, it's 859 pages, and it did take about two minutes to load in. I'm not joking. It takes a long time to load. But once you're all set up and loaded in, this massive one here, uh, the performance is actually quite good. Again, this is surprising that it's doing really well. So you can edit and stretch and move images around and it's not going to be too choppy. Now you notice that sometimes it will be a little bit. So I'm just going to type here and that's not bad. Okay, so that is fine. And I also do have open here in the background is some spreadsheets too. So spreadsheets, not, I mean, perfect. You can see a little bit of scrolling lag there, but this kind of general computing I think is it's fairly decent here from what you're getting from this kind of hardware. It's not too bad, but of course, if you are going to be having huge spreadsheets, then you probably be you want to be on a Core i5. You do, you do. You don't want to be with this kind of hardware. But for light general computing, this is actually performing uh, really quite well. Okay, so what about 4K video editing? Now, this normally I wouldn't be testing on this kind of hardware, but it's actually reasonable as long as you don't get too big or too complicated with your edits just keep things basic when you start then grading videos and changing things and lots of transitions it really bogs down and becomes a little bit unbearable so the playback at the quarter resolution is a little slow and sometimes does stutter a little bit but skipping ahead in the timeline it's not an absolute huge choppy mess that i thought it might actually be so this is, again, surprising, this hardware being able to do this. And yeah, probably because of the improvements they have made too with Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's move on now to our export times. So I've got approximately one minute of footage that I'm going to export, and it is the YouTube preset, as you can see, that I've got selected. And this is running all off an SSD, okay, it's a Samsung 850 Evo that I do have it installed because on the eMMC I simply don't have enough space for everything to show you and it's also too slow for that. So the timer, bring this up, hit start and then export. So this I expect will be quite slow. Okay, about to finish up, so when that disappears, it means it's done and I'll hit pause. Okay, so three minutes and 19 seconds for one minute of footage. I normally don't do this test on this hardware, and that's not actually too bad. Gaming performance, so this is Counter-Strike. It's 720p, and I'm up against bots here because uh, I'm not trusted anymore because I'm using this overlay here to show the frame rate. But the idea is just to show you that, yes, simple, basic, light titles like this one here, you can play. It's going to have playable frame rates, but, I mean, only just. We're scraping, like, 30 frames per second. And for some reason, my mouse button is not working and I can't seem to shoot. Now, oh, there we go. And to very quickly show you that, yes, Linux is working and running just fine on this particular mini PC. No problems. It is very, very quick. If you plan to run it on this, it will run really well with this hardware, of course. Okay, so to quickly recap here, the performance actually came out to be a little bit better than I was expecting from this one. The refresh chip in this, the J4125 with its 10 watts and slightly higher clocks does perform a little bit better. And I even managed to edit a 4K video, but I don't recommend you do that because it is a little slow. In fact, painfully slow and slow on the export times there that I did show you. But it is possible if you are really pushed to do it on this hardware. So video playback, very, very good. So MP9, your ATVC 10 bit files, 4K, 4K 60 hertz with this, all fine. So that is good. This particular machine machine here is good for that, for light computing, light tasks. You're not going to be playing Call of Duty Warzone at 200 frames per second on hardware like this, of course. I think most people have realistic expectations of what to expect from this. So where is 
the, well, the con. They've, of course, nothing is perfect, and they installed and used their storage uh, EM, EMMC, so that is not the fastest as I showed you with those speeds. Really, this should have come with a SATA 3 SSD like the competition. Other brands are using SATA 3, normally 256 gigabytes of storage. This model should have had it in there, which is disappointing. But we do have inside that M.2 slot, but it is simply just not working or enabled in the BIOS, which is a shame because I would have liked to have been able to install a drive, and I'm sure most others would. So if they're going to be revising this mini PC, I hope in the future they do ship it out with a SATA 3 drive pre-installed. But you can install a 2.5 inch one, of course, which I do recommend to help increase this, the performance a little bit of this particular mini PC. And then on the underside, so the fan sucks the air in right here, and then it vents it out the bottom. And because it is on the bottom here, it does, if you're going to be pushing this mini PC just 24 seven or for four hours on end at 100% load, it does build up that heat eventually. And I was seeing about 52 degrees to the touch. So it's getting hot to the touch. Now, if you're just doing light tasks and things, it actually feels very cool to the touch and you don't even hear the fan. The fan barely comes on at all. So for light computing only, it does have a good option. Price point of this one, so it's going to be selling for around, I think, about 200 and... 40 pounds. Um, so yes, it's getting up there a little bit for the spec. I hope they can lower that price down. There'll probably be some coupons as well out for it because I've reviewed other mini PCs with AMD Ryzen 5s that um, do actually sell for a very similar price but offer just so much more in terms of performance. So I hope to see you back in the channel with more up and coming mini PC reviews and of course other tech reviews. Bye for now.